Good to have you. Nigeria has the capacity to grow and export processed tomatoes. Currently, it is the second largest producer of tomatoes in Africa and the 14th largest in the world. However, there are only a handful of tomato processing plants in the country. Tomato Joss, an agricultural production company in Nigeria, has begun processing tomatoes at its $5 million plant in Kaduna State, Nigeria. The company disclosed this via its Twitter account. The commencement of the tomato processing is aimed at contributing to the Nigerian economy by helping smallholder farmers grow excellent tomatoes and convert to high-quality tomato paste. While tomato processing is one of the ways to restore agriculture, many Nigerians find it difficult to engage in the business as they do not see potential in a produce with a short life. Farmers lose millions in revenue due to damages and food waste as well. Joining me in the studio to discuss this is the CEO of uh, Tomato Joss Processing Limited, Mira Mehta. Mira, it's good to have you as always. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. All right. Um, you know, we talked about this processing plant uh, the last time you were here, and uh, the processing is coming to fruition, as it were. So how would you describe the journey so far? Well, the journey so far has been full of ups and downs, mm -hmm. as any entrepreneur's journey um, has been. We, as I told you last time, you know, we really wanted to start with a solid foundation on the raw material side, that's on the tomato side. And so we 100% feel the pain that farmers feel when they grow tomatoes, spend a lot of money, try and make sure they get the best quality fruit, and then have to sell into the fresh market. We've lived that pain right alongside them. Um, and now we're finally at the point, you know, the groundbreaking ceremony on Monday is the kickoff of a huge year of growth for us. Um, we are hiring new people, we're hiring a whole new team, we are starting to build the factory, and this time next year we're going to be commissioning, and in 2021 we're going to be launching the product. So that feels great after, you know, certainly a lot of struggle over the last five years. Indeed, thumbs up for you there. Now, it is said Nigeria is currently the second largest producer of tomatoes in Africa, and of course uh, 14th uh, largest in the world. Uh, impressive feat, but uh, how does Nigeria leverage on that uh, development? So right now, they're not really able to leverage on that development at all. Um, the biggest grower of tomatoes in Africa is Egypt. Egypt actually has huge investment from Heinz and other large tomato companies that are helping to produce the value-add products. Okay. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here in Nigeria, too. Right now, millions of farmers grow tomatoes a lot in the north, but even down in Kwara State and parts of Lagos mm -hmm. and Ogun as well. Um, but what we see is that, you know, the challenge the farmers face is finding that person who can be a consistent off taker, who mm -hmm. can buy at the right price. And, you know, the other challenge that we see mm. is, you know, processors and farmers need to enter into contracts mm. together. Everywhere else in the world, there's a set price that you know you're going to get when you farm your tomatoes. And so we're trying to bring that kind of regularity mm. into the system, which will help a lot. Indeed, uh, Mira. Now, uh you know, you, you, one tends to wonder in terms of uh, growing tomatoes, as it were, is it, uh, looking at it geographically, uh, how would you describe the demographics for Nigeria? Is it widespread or is it just restricted to the northern parts uh, of the country, as it were? That's a great question, Yi. So if you want to grow tomatoes in the open field, okay. which is in, you know, without a greenhouse, you will need to have what's called a true dry season. Mm -hmm. So the humidity levels in Lagos, the humidity levels in Oshun and Ogun, and mm -hmm. some of the areas that have become hubs for produce feeding into Lagos, mm -hmm. those are not great environments for large-scale open field tomato farming. Okay. Now, there are some farmers that do farm tomatoes, but they would mostly be feeding into the fresh market because, again, um, the price of fresh market tomatoes all over the world is always about three times higher than the price for processing tomatoes. Okay. So if you want to sell to, you know, a hotel or somebody who's going to put their tomatoes in a salad or somebody who wants to grow, eat fresh tomatoes, yeah. you can do, you know, tomato farming in and around Lagos, um, especially in greenhouses. But if you want to do tomatoes for processing, you really have to look probably towards the northern part of the country. Um, we see Abuja and maybe Kogi State as kind of the lowest that you can go mm -hmm. to still get the, the metrics that you need. So to a large extent, it's widespread, but they do have their disadvantages and advantages as well. That's correct, yeah. Very good. Now, let's take a look at some specifics here. Niger's apex ranked as a CBN also aims to bridge an annual shortfall of more than 1.2 million tons of tomatoes, uh, valued about $2.5 billion annually. So 
In terms of the value change, uh, chain rather, uh, regarding for tomatoes, so where should these funds be invested in, you think? So I think they need to be invested all across. You know, um, obviously investing in farms, investing in farmers, I think that's really important. We've seen that, of course, investing in the value add is also very important. But some of the other areas that are less obvious, I think, are also very important. So, for example, the people who provide the tractors, you know, there needs to be investment there. There needs to be good, solid businesses that are in place that can support all of these farms, that can yeah. support all of these factories. So I really think it's across the board. And I think that the central bank has really tried to do that um, in their approach. They've tried to be broad. And I think that's the right thing. I don't think focusing just on the factories or just on the farms is really going to work. Very good. And how proactive has the government been, uh, you know, regarding the processing plants and uh, where you do grow all these uh, tomatoes, as it were. Have they been proactive in terms of uh, providing you with the uh, logistics to go with and, uh, of course, the operating environment as well? So Tomato Joss is located in Kaduna State, of which course. is a little bit confusing. Um, I know our name mm. sends, tends to make everybody think we're in Plateau Indeed. State. Um, but we, we chose Kaduna State because of the ease of doing business there. We've okay. been able to actually get set up pretty well. Um, you know, the things that we need as a farmer and as a factory are the things that any company needs. We mm. need good roads, we need power, we need, you know, water, and we need to have some level of ability to run our operations and understand mm. how we get permits, how we do all those kinds of things. And to that extent, I think, you know, the state government um, and all of the civil servants that we've worked with have actually been able to provide us with that basic level of infrastructure. For me, coming from America, and you know, being a private sector person, yeah. my feeling is that government's job is to create the infrastructure and then set back and let the company do the work. And we've been able to operate in that kind of an environment. So we've been, we've been pretty happy so far. Very good. Now, Tomato Joe's is also proposing to invest 7 billion naira in five years to increase investment in tomato farming and processes. So this is quite ambitious, um, no doubt. But how do you plan to achieve that? That's a great question. So. So far, we've invested about 3 billion naira um, into our company over the last six years because, of course, we have been operating since 2014. And the latest investment that we just announced this week is going to help us move from farming only to farming and processing. Now, once we have that full system in place, we're only able to achieve with our whole investment so far yeah. less than two percent of market share of the market because okay. Nigeria has such a big market so the rest of that seven billion naira that we're still going to put in is going to really be to scale the full operation okay. put in larger factory grow the farm and everything in between mm -hmm. so that we can start to eventually get to ten percent market share which is really what we want to hit Talking about everything in between uh, I remember the last time we spoke we talked about the challenges of storage uh, over time, has there been any uh, major commitment towards improving the standards of storage, especially with tomatoes, as it were? Tomatoes are such a difficult crop. They're difficult to grow and they're difficult to store, exactly like what you said. You know, and what we have tried to do is eliminate or diminish our need for outside support. So, you know, I know that um, other governments or, you know, governments across the country have invested in silos or storage facilities and things like that. We really don't want to be reliant on outside storage mechanisms because we see that as a risk. Mm -hmm. You know, um, part of the reason that we're fully integrated is because for us, the more we control, the, the, the lower the risk for us. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, while there have been a lot of pushes and interventions in the space of storage, we're actually just trying to maintain that Maybe. within within our own company. Mm -hmm. And that's also a part of the investment that we're making. Very good. Now, um, once the processing comes into full swing, are you looking at uh, exporting as well, not just for the domestic uh, market, as it were? I think we are, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, we always get inbound requests ever since the last two years when we started doing test runs on processing. We've been getting requests from the Middle East. We've been getting requests from neighboring countries in West Africa, sometimes even as far flung as Japan. Wow. So we really think that there's a huge opportunity for us, um, once we get the product right, to start pushing it much, much farther beyond Nigeria's borders. And we would be very happy to have Tomato Joss become a global brand. Indeed, uh, we will all be, <laughs> as, <it laughs> were, as major stakeholders as well. So, Paul, what would you regard as the greatest challenge 
you know, to your venture? Wow. Um, I think the greatest challenge, you know, to any venture is the people. You know, and I think for us, um, you know, we're in a smaller talent pool in Kaduna yeah. than we are in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being able to find and attract talent mm -hmm. and being able to grow that talent is really important for us. Um, at the beginning of the company's life, you know, we were bringing on anybody who was willing to work with us. Mm -hmm. And that's been great. Uh, but as we grow, you know, we're finding that we need to bring in people who already have some experience who can come in and help mm -hmm. build systems. Mm -hmm. You know, we're no longer just a small startup. We're now trying to become a multi-million dollar company. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, finding, retaining talent, training people up, getting them to buy into our vision, our values, um, that's really where I'm trying to spend most of my time. Indeed, which brings me to this question. Since inception of this company, how has the Nigerian public, the business sector, agricultural stakeholders as well, keyed into your ideals? Well, we've been very fortunate, I think, to have a very supportive ecosystem around us. Okay. Um, agriculture in Nigeria, of course, is under a huge push right now, um, both from the government and from the private sector. There's been a lot of you know, will and goodwill, I think, to try and help agricultural companies really take off. You know, they talk about the agricultural revolution. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting right in the middle of that. So, you know, we've found to have a very supportive environment. Other businesses, um, you know, everybody from Olam to even Dangote and mm -hmm. Flower Mills of Nigeria, they've all been very supportive of us as a much smaller company mm -hmm. and have really tried to help us grow up. So, you know, we're really grateful for that mm -hmm. and that environment. Um, hasn't been quite as cutthroat as I was afraid it would be. Very good. And now in 30 seconds, your outlook for this industry, hopefully in the next five years, you think? I think it's going to take off in a major way. Mm. That's the short answer. I really think that this is the start of something huge. Mm. Very good. Uh, Mira Mehta, uh, Managing Director, Tomato Joss, uh, always a pleasure having you. Thank you so much, Nii. It's a pleasure to be here.